It really depends on what you're coding for um, in terms of how smoothly the iterator reliability process can go. So if you're coding for some um, more topical ideas, right? So you're just coding for whether or not this topic is being described. Those can be more reliable. So Miles and Huberman talk about how topical coding, so you're just coding for what's obvious in the text, is more reliable than more interpretive coding, where you're coding, you're interpreting one level from what's beyond in the, beyond what's in the text, right? So this might be something like coding for um, attitudes, positive or ne negative, or affect, right? So often people aren't saying, I'm angry, but you're interpreting um, from what's in the text, they might be angry. And so those tend to be less reliable and might be places where you want to make sure that you're understanding anger or concern, um, which is something from my own experience in the same way. Some teams find this relatively easy. I mean, qualitative data analysis as a whole is, is iterative. And so, of course, in a rate of reliability process in qualitative data analysis is going to be iterative. Some teams sort of make steady forward progress. I was working with a team recently that I came back on their day three of their coding boot camp where they were all coding um, these data and they were still deciding how they were defining things and what they were coding for. So depending on your project and depending on who you're working with and how much experience they have with qualitative data analysis can really make this process be more challenging or go slightly more smoothly, but it's always a process. It's no matter who you are or what kind of software you're using or not using software, it's always a process. I mean, they can substantially slow it down, right? So not understand. Not being on the same page, ultimately, iterator reliability is about getting on the same page. That's really what it is. And everybody in the team understanding things in the same way. So achieving it, um, if people are understanding things in substantially different ways, it can take a while. Um, but I've never known it to completely stop a project. Yeah. So. Depending on your methodology in qualitative research, subjectivity might be desired, right? So in ethnography, for instance, uh, I'm not an ethnographer, but I understand from ethnographers that subjectivity is desired. You know your data, and so of course you're going to see it in a particular way. So when does it matter to go through an iterator reliability process? Well, it depends on your methodology. It depends on where you might want to publish. and I. I would argue that if you're working as a team, it's important for your teammates to understand how you're coding and to do it similarly. So the idea of iterator reliability comes from statistics, and it's that one coder is interchangeable for another. That's never going to be 100% achieved, but the idea is that you're achieving agreement. You're coding similarly. Um, so in order for your coding to be useful for you, you may, uh, well, you likely want to go through this process as a team of um, coding the same data and seeing where there are differences.